Hey everybody, Steven here, and today looking at the Switch build of Subnautica. So this is a Twitch stream that Obraxis and Danya did last week. And with this, they went about an hour, 20 minutes, or close to that. And they just did Q&A. So with this video, I'm giving my opinion on the footage and then also kind of condensing the Q&A. But I will have a link for the video in the description if you want to watch the full thing yourself. So let's go ahead and get into some of these questions first. So one of the early ones was, are there plans to add more content to the game? And no, there isn't. Really, they're just working on polish right now and making sure that this runs really, really good on the Switch. There's still no official release date either other than spring. So sometime this spring, we should uh, get the game in our hands. And a lot of those factors boil down to making sure that they can actually hit their mark and get that released on the date that they're saying because what they don't want to do is hey it's april may whatever and then they get there and then it's still not ready so i understand that we see that with other games cyberpunk being an example of that where they still push for a release and it's clearly not done and they don't want to make that mistake so just leaving it open-ended up really allows them to make sure that the game is fully ready for release before they actually give it out to the public so another question that this one was interesting because I, there's a tidbit about the game that I didn't know but the question was in regards to this secret project that the devs are working on and this is a game that I've referenced it's really like a turn-based game I think of like XCOM and outside of some posts for jobs on Twitter and just a couple mentions we really don't have any details. So the question was, they've been so transparent with Subnautica and Below Zero, but they have this secret project and kind of the reasoning behind that. And with this, it's really because the game is in pre-production. So when it's in pre-production, the game can go through a bunch of different changes and they don't want to give out all this information only to later kind of scrap certain things and it maybe turns out to not be exactly what they were showcasing early in the process and so Subnautica was originally an iPad game called Descend I did not know that I've seen the early footage and I've seen and I can't remember who did it but it's a great video on YouTube of really it's almost like a documentary on Subnautica in the whole process from early stages of the game all the way up until it's released and maybe it was mentioned in there and I just didn't catch it or it just kind of left my memory but I, I was fascinated by that notion that the game was originally going to be an iPad game and also the name Descend I think Subnautica is, is such a cooler name than Descend but that's really why so uh, that game is in pre-production so they're just not releasing a lot of info on it right now uh, another big one will there be a third game uh, I mentioned or talked about this in the previous video where I got to do the Discord Q&A with the devs and that one comes up a lot and they always say most likely but they're going to be taking a break from it right now. So I definitely think they'll be back but they mentioned that they haven't even really sat down as a team just to kind of talk about potential things that they would want to do if they did that third game. But so my guess is, yeah, it's, it's going to happen. It's just probably going to be a while. And for some reason, while they were talking about it this time, my mind started wandering and I was just like, man, thinking about these next gen consoles and what you can do with that and PC hardware. And I love the graphics in the games. I'm not knocking them at all. But that next step in, let's say, five, six, seven years and we get a third Subnautica game and how good that would look. It, it actually has me more excited for the potential of a third game, too. Um, like I said, I love the art style and all that, but it would be cool to just see. Because if you look at Subnautica and then look at Below Zero, I mean, that's a huge graphical leap between those two. And then now we have even more time. So I think it'll be awesome. Curious to see what they do with it. But yeah, there's most likely going to be a third game. Just no concrete plans right now. Um, Co-op and multiplayer. That seems to be one of the most common asked questions for the devs. They get that a ton. And so really these 
two games being survival games, uh, for them it just doesn't make sense to have multiplayer. But maybe in the third game, maybe we get uh, multiplayer in that third game, and the story fits with that because right now it just doesn't fit with this. You're supposed to be a lone survivor on the planet, or in the second one, Below Zero, you're trying to find your sister, right? Um, they mentioned something else that they get tickets every 20 seconds on average, um, which is sent through uh, an analysis to help them filter out issues. So when you create a ticket in game, you press that F8 and you're going to submit a problem because they get so many, they can't just sit there and look at all of them individually. So they really have this to filter out and see, oh, this is a very, very common problem and then they can address it. Because yeah, that's a lot. There's no way they could physically look at all of those. Um, so the Switch version, we have a lot of different optimizations and the question was in regards to that making it to PC and consoles. Just because I know people are having problems with certain bugs, especially on consoles. And um, right now it isn't on consoles or PC, but it will make its way to that, the consoles and PC. So once the game launches, this is where they're going to actually put out an update for the consoles and PC so that they get to benefit from all of the work that is going into the Switch version. So one of the things that Obraxis mentioned with this is watching this when you look at the draw distance and as he's kind of going further into an area, instead of things just popping in, you'll actually see that gradual fade in. And this is something that you see on No Man's Sky does a really good job of it and so they've actually updated the game so that it does that because I know that's been something that a lot of people have talked about is the, the pop-in so this will actually help that um, something that I noticed and I talked to Danya about this is in certain areas it seems pixelated and I was wondering if this is because you're taking a switch he's running it through OBS and then I'm getting it through the stream through twitch and it's on a 32 inch monitor so you're having these not, they're not filters but you're you're taking something and you're changing the scale multiple times so 720p upscaled to 1080 at 60 fps through obs that's then going through the twitch stream and then i'm displaying it on my 32 inch 1440p monitor so because of that i think that was potentially Part of it, we're not going to have any in-game anti-aliasing with this. So you're going to have some jaggies, pixelation, right? Uh, jagged edges. And I'm curious as to when you're playing it in handheld mode on the Switch. Because the PPI with that is like 240. My monitor is 93. And when you have that increase in the pixels per inch, when we look at like 4K monitors, for instance, you don't really need anti-aliasing uh, optimization um, software or in-game software to help with that because the pixel density is so great that it kind of takes care of that for you so I'm curious to see this in person when I'm playing it in the handheld mode versus if maybe I dock this to my PC monitor or then if I dock this to a 4k TV so I think it, obviously you're gonna get some pixelation but I do think in handheld mode this is gonna look phenomenal and if we're looking at this right now, it's not to size, obviously, depending on what you're viewing this through. So my 32 inch monitor has to stretch this out. So I think that's part of the problem, but very curious to see how this looks in person. And I think it's gonna look great, but I'm also curious as to reading text when it's smaller like this, because that may be an issue that I foresee if text pops up and you're having a hard time reading it on your PDA or anything like that in handheld mode. So next one was below zero. We had a lot of below zero questions, but with below zero, what are the post launch plans and outside of making sure that they can fix any bugs that pop up or anything like that, they, they don't have any concrete plans right now. And I know development has kind of shifted a little bit so the next update should be the release update where we'll get the 
end game and things like that. They mentioned a 12.5 update, actually, so I may be off on that. It may go 12.5 and then 13 for the EA releases, but um, that one will be the full release of the game once we hit EA 13. And then after that, I think we'll have not only the bug fixes, but maybe down the road we get some other things updated with the game. Fingers crossed. Uh, somebody brought up the notion of Subnautica in space. Um, going back to the third game notion, uh, Obraxa said the it's fun, it's a fun thought, but there's no plans to do that. And then logistically, how would they get that done in terms of gameplay and things like this? Uh, another one was in regards to different. Um, well, we have the Cyclops, right? Different subs, and there were it was it the Atlas. It may be a different name, but we had different iterations and people are talking about it online. And it's like, well, why didn't those things end up in the game? And so he was talking about with this and with the games that you make, you end up doing five to 10, maybe a lot more different designs for this. And with that, you're only going to choose a couple. So yeah, those designs may be put out there, but that doesn't mean that they're going to end up in the game. So I think a lot of people, they see those, they're like, oh, that's going to be definitively in the game. But these were just concept art stuff. So it, it was conceptual. It wasn't what they were actually for sure going to go with because they want to look at these different options and what's going to best fit the game. And then they kind of choose a couple out of that and they narrow with that down. So we see the same thing with creatures, right? Um, with the game and I know the ice dragon gets brought up a lot I've talked about that on different videos and that unfortunately has been cut from below zero that actually boiled down to not just hey we have the art we've already done the 3d model but we need a biome for this thing we need to do all the animations we need to rig up the sounds there's a lot more work that goes into it than just doing the art and then doing a 3d model and I think they're thinking about their time and their resources in regards to these things so that they don't do all this work only to end up scrapping something. Uh, another one was, and this got covered in my Discord video um, with the Q&A with the devs, but um, essentially asking what things have made it into the game that has been put out there by the community. And with Below Zero, there's a lot. The Spy Penguin is actually an idea from um, a fan. So they actually took uh, their their art, their concept art for it, and they actually implemented that in the game. And that's, like I said, from a fan. That's really, really cool. But not only that, but we have the art in the game when we look at the posters. A lot of that is fan art. And you can look at the for fans, by fans, because where they sell their merchandise, you'll actually see a lot of these same designs. You could buy this. I actually have one of the shirts for the Ghost Leviathan, and it's actually a blanket in the game, but I actually have that as a shirt. And then, of course, the music. So when we're looking at the different discs that you can find around the world that you can play on the jukebox, jute, juke, jukebox, the music box, <laughs> with that, uh, those are actually made by fans. So, yeah, they're actually incorporating a lot more, it seems like, into Below Zero. And I think that's really, really cool what, what they're doing. So, like I said, it was a mixture. A lot of questions about Below Zero, and I think that's because the game is going to come out here pretty soon. I'm hoping March, maybe April, we'll see. But that kind of ties this in to the release of this on Switch, too. So we're going to get not only this switch version of subnautica but then below zero comes out so we'll have a lot of gameplay to kind of do on our hands with both of these games releasing very close together so excited about that i'm just excited about the notion of, of being able to take this on my switch when we travel or anything like that and then my son will hop in with the game as well so he's played a little bit but i think if i get it on the switch he'll be more apt to actually play it a lot more so in terms of my opinion of the gameplay footage that we're getting here, I think it looks really good. Like I said, I'm thinking the pixelation is more because it's being stretched, and I think in your hands it's going to look a lot better. It doesn't look obviously as good as when I'm playing on PC, but once I shrink that down, I think it's going to be pretty close. 
I'm not seeing any huge glaring issues. We see maybe a little bit of pop in here and there, but you also see that gradual fading in versus just like a quick pop in. Um, every now and then I may see something, but I think they have more time to optimize this as well, fix bugs, things like that. I'd be curious to see what the, because I didn't see the Reaper Leviathan, but also when you go down to the inactive lava zone and all of that and how that looks. But look at the water. I mean, the water looks phenomenal for the Switch hardware. And that's something to keep in mind. Like, I think people are playing on their Xbox Series X and their PlayStation 5 and they're playing on PC. And so they're going to judge it from that viewpoint. And if you're going to do that, you're probably going to be disappointed because the hardware is not the same. But the fact that they're able to take the game and put it on here and it runs smoothly, I'm not seeing any huge FPS drops or anything like that. It looks smooth. So excited to get the game in my hands and actually test it further. But I think right now this uh, is, is running great. And this just got announced, what, last fall? And so we're always we're already seeing footage that looks good. And I think this too is something that a lot of people needed because we've only seen small tidbits of it in the past where it's, yeah, a 30 second clip or maybe one to two minutes in a trailer or something like that. And this is a long format gameplay. So you can actually see how this is running. But I want to hear from you guys too on this. What do you think of this? Keep in mind, this is still not finished. So they're still going to optimize this a lot more. But what do you think so far of how this is looking, how it's playing, and kind of your hopes and expectations for the games? Some of the questions that were answered with the Q&A here, maybe notions about a third game, and will you be getting Subnautica on the Nintendo Switch? So that's going to be it for this one, everybody. If you like the video, hit the like button for me. And if you want to continue to follow along with all my content, hit the subscribe button for me. Thanks so much for watching.